She got that ass 30, though. <laughs> 30. She got an easy 30. Easy 30. But did she lose, though? Did they lose? They lost. She would have had a score 60 for the win. I'll be the one to take the risk to go and get them bands. I'll be the one to never sit and go and make a plan. Knowing my mother getting old now, I don't got no time. Gotta keep a couple for the road or else get left behind. Hey. Yeah. yeah. To the hundred yeah. touch yeah. I stand. Yeah. I'm going to go. Okay. Hey. The it's going to be one of the ones. Okay. Okay. It's going to be one of the ones. Okay. I've been uh. done before, then I know I can. Okay. I'm on the rise. I'm trying to keep okay. a level okay. head. She want my time. She begging Call me to Heavy artillery today. Brought in heavy artillery. Heavy artillery today. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, what's the deal, y'all? Hope all is well. Welcome back to another episode. I'm Duke. I'm Omar. I'm Jalan. Mike Rashid. And this is another episode of the number one podcast in all of Los Angeles. Nice and neat. Yo. What up? What up? Yo. What's the deal? <laughs> Big guns. Look. <laughs> Bring them look, out. Look, look, look. We got, we have. A, not just a all around in, a intellectual on the show, so I'm gonna start there. We have mm -hmm. an intellectual on the show, um, super super gem dropper. But we had an episode, fellas, a couple of weeks back, and we were just talking about just what the 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 entire scope of dating looks like right now. Mm -hmm. And within talking about the scope of dating, you know, polygamy came up, and polygamy is something that is being explored from men and women. This is not just a patriarchal thing, but it's, been, it's being explored by men and women, and men and women are both finding the benefits from it. And we were curious about it, so we talked about it. And we seen in the comments how you guys said, yo, maybe you guys should get somebody involved in polygamy to talk about polygamy. And guess what we did today, guys? Big guns. Big guns. <laughs> Big guns. We brought in the comparable Mike Rashid <laughs> to sit here and talk to Nice and Neat today about polygamy. And obviously, he's going to tell us a lot more that goes into it. He's going to give us a little bit about his background and just where he comes from and how he even got to this choice within his life. But he got rules, too. So, Mike, what's going on, man? How you doing, boss? Well, first and foremost, I appreciate sharing time and space with you, brothers. Oh, man, thanks, you know brothers. Y'all dope. Thanks for having me. But yeah, polygamy um, is interesting. Polygamy, well, let's talk about monogamy first and foremost. I'm a student of the world, right? I like to, to study um, anthropology, history, you know, all of these things. And human beings are the only animal on the planet, I think with the exception of penguins, that practice monogamy. We're the only primate, right? The only mammal, right? So it's interesting. Monogamy is not necessarily um, in our, our uh, coding, if you will, right? So we all have, we all are bound somewhat by our DNA. And DNA is digital information and genetic instructions for whatever body it's in. Your DNA is your parents, their parents, and so on and so forth all comes down to how you're gonna express those genes, right? Mm -hmm. So most, for most of human history, there was not a concept of uh, pair bonding. You know what I'm saying? There was not a concept of getting married. That's a short blip of human experience. So we gotta look at it like this. They say modern humans have been on this planet around 300,000 years, right? We've only been quote unquote civilized for around 5,000 years, right? And you could look back 100 years where people really civilized, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Like we were slaves, you feel me? Yeah. <clears throat> so you see like how long, how, how short of a period people have been like nice to each other, you know what I'm saying? So um, the concept of marriage, it wasn't necessarily a romantic thing. It was like a property thing. You know, you look at like, when a black person was under the condition of slavery, whoever quote unquote owned them would put their name on them. You know what I'm saying? And you had paper, paperwork. This is your slave. It belonged to you. Frederick Smith, you wearing that slave name. You wearing the name of your owner. And that's what women essentially were to an extent. They were to wearing, men. yeah, to it men. was ownership. You know, that's like my woman, like that comes from something. You know what I mean? And I don't think that that's necessarily nefarious, right? So I know a lot of women feel triggered by things like that, but it's like, look, the way that things should be is, this is how it is in my, like, 
I have two daughters and my daughters will be my responsibility until I hand them off to their husband, whom in which I'm gonna help select and whom in which his family, I'm gonna be part of their family and they're part of my family. So make sure my daughter's good, you feel me? Mm -hmm. Hand her off to a good man, so, you know. One man. One man. Got you. But let's say he wanted multiple wives. Mm -hmm. I'm not opposed to that. As long as he's a good man, he's an honorable man, he's an honest man, um, and he can uh, handle multiple women, I will have no issue with that whatsoever. You know, my sister is one of two wives. And they're fine. You mm -hmm. know, it's normal. You know, I'm, I'm a Muslim, so that's normal in our in our culture and our faith. So, but it's not like I feel like what here in the West, when people think about like polygamy, they think about like some pimp shit, some player shit. Yeah. Of course, not like that. You know what I'm saying? It's like just like over there, fantasy. it's not like that at all. They're not even. They're like it's like a community, like a family. So how it is in Islam, like if you want, you can have four wives, right? And if you want multiple wives, each wife have to have the same kind of house, same kind of car. You can't treat one better than the other, right? First of all, you got to be a man of resources to be able to handle that. Not just financial resources, but intellectual resources. You got to have emotional resilience. You got to be able to manage that storm because women are a lot to deal with sometimes. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. So it takes a temper man to be able to even step into that kind of situation and for it to work, mm. you know? And um, yeah, so it's a lot of responsibility on that man. So if that man, you know, can fill this woman's cup completely, what's it to her if he fills this woman's cup as well? She's going to give him more sons. Their kids all have a bigger community. These wives have different talents, attributes, skills, whatever mm -hmm. that they can teach each other. It's a big, bigger family. Mm -hmm. And marriage traditionally is about people coming together to endure the rigors of life together. Because life can fucking suck, you know what I'm saying? So it's best to do it together. The bigger the family, the better. So that's, that's kind of like how that came about. But here in the West, it's like, it's different. Now, America is Europe, however you want to cut it. America is literally a, an extension of Britannia, you know, because that's who they were belonged to at one point, and they fought and got their independence. Um, is that or Great we, Britain? we, that's yeah. So we live by a Eurocentric standard of society, right? Shit. Which is not conducive to happiness. If you if you ask me, it doesn't even work out for them. I mean, here in America, all right. So if you if you Google search, anybody can Google search countries with the highest divorce rates, right? So all European countries in America, you know what I'm saying? Only European countries in America, you feel me? Fit over 50% divorce, so, so marriage, a monogamous marriage in the West does not work. And you could say that because the statistics is there. Yep. If most of them end in divorce, then it doesn't work. Mm. You feel me? They don't have these numbers in other places, mm. you know? When it's not like, you know how it is here, it's just different. It's about love only. And love is not a practical metric for a relationship. It's just not. It's not. You're not going to love somebody forever mm. or have that kind of intensity of love forever. Mm -hmm. So you got to have something else there. And it's got to be a, an understanding. Mm. It should be rules. It should be, you know, people should be able to feel safe with each other to have conversations like, babe, I really am attracted to her too. I really like her company. You know what I'm saying? Like, let's talk. Mm. But, you know, a man doesn't say that to a woman because that's like taboo. So a man go and do that, you know what I'm saying? Mm. Um, you know, uh, so how it is here. So me, I, you know, people will say, are you a polygamist? I'm like, no, I'm just a person. But, you know, I've explored a romantic style of polygamy or polygyny. That's when a man have multiple women, right? I've done that. Um, you've, you've been around when we were yeah. all hanging out. So there's a difference between polygamy and polygyny? Polygamy is just an umbrella. And okay. then there's just different ways you could do it. Okay. A woman with multiple men, a man with multiple women. You know, it's, it's all different ways. Polygyny okay. is the man having multiple women. Okay. You know? But not wives. 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 I mean, that's what you want. That's, that's the for, goal. For me, I don't date, you know what I'm saying? Unless you courtship don't. marriage. Sometimes it don't work out in a the courtship. Then we, we off. You know what I'm saying? So, so what, yeah. What, what, my, do you, what do you, how do you d differentiate dating and courtship? Well, I guess dating courtship can't be the same, but typically dating, people just dating 
just forever. No intention. No, no intention. intentions. Okay. You know, so I don't have time to do that. You know what I'm saying? Um, I'm real busy. So anyone I meet, you know, I, let, I, I run down my protocol and I explain this is where I'm at. I move with intent. So if you want that vibe, we can, we can explore this, mm -hmm. you know? If not, no biggie. But I don't even do casual things, yeah. you know? I used to, but I don't anymore. I just, I literally don't have time. And I don't want to like waste my energy with someone that I'm not gonna, that I'm not considering bring, being a part of my family. So if, if genetically, we basically are saying genetically, we're made up to want to have multiple partners. Is that okay. a man and woman thing? Or All right. what? Everything boils down to passing on our DNA. Uh -huh. Every creature on this planet has an innate desire to reproduce, to pass on his information, uh -huh. right? We just hardwired like that. So it was advantageous for, think about it, a woman is pregnant for nine months at a time. So when a man impregnates a woman, typically you have sex, you impregnate her, right? Um, now we have so many reasons why that doesn't happen. Condoms, um, birth control, um, the additives in food, unhealthy lifestyle, whatever. So, but our body's like, oh, I just got her pregnant. I'm off of her. Who's next? You know what I'm saying? Because we keep producing sperm. And that was necessary for us to grow as, that's, it's necessary for our species to thrive. And our, our species and the way that we're coded, it doesn't follow these man-made rules. Mm -hmm. It don't follow like, you know, one man, one woman. It don't follow any of that. Mm -hmm. It follows like nature. It follows those hips, those breasts. That looks, that looks uh, uh, conducive to bearing a, a, a seed, planting my seed and it being fertile and it growing mm -hmm. and giving me my fruit. You know what I'm saying? Yes. So that's just how we're hardwired. We're not thinking, we're attracted, the fact that we're attracted to butts and hips and breasts, that's like biological. We don't think like, you know what? I want a girl with the hip ratio to butt. That just looks like a healthy woman that's fertile. Yeah. Big breasts is fertile. She can feed my children. So you no one's thinking about, I want a woman who can, I'm, I'm sure she can nurse my, my child. You know what I'm saying? You're not thinking that, but your body is. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? Just like they look at that, they look at a taller, strong, protective man as being a, a good suitor for her yeah. to give her a kid and protect her. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So that's just how it is. It's, that's nature. So you know right now, right, just, just so we could give our listeners and our viewers just a little bit of background. Right now, you're currently, you have, you're courting how many women right now? A couple. A couple. Yeah. A couple. Okay. Yeah. So outside of the sexual desires, is there any other positives for a man all right so let me let me bring it back so i'm not courting multiple women for a polygynous relationship right now okay i'm courting just for one right but i gotta see who's who who's 30. Mm -hmm. okay you know you know what i mean so i'm gonna just give a little bit of history on my previous yep. like uh Please. poly relationship um i decided that i didn't want to do that not anytime soon again right because of the complexity of the emotions, when things don't work out with one of them, it makes it awkward for this other person because I still have feelings for this one and I don't want to deal with nobody right now. So it puts her in a predicament, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? So that's one element to it. Another element is like, you know, um, a woman, when she's in the presence of the divine masculine, of a man that she looked, when she, I'm sure you, you brothers, y'all got, got women and they love you to death. When you look in your woman's eyes, she see, you see God, because that's how she see you. Mm -hmm. When a woman is like that, she would do anything for you, whether she wants to or not. You know what I'm saying? Her mouth is not going to be honest. She's not going to say, no, I don't want to do that, if you're serious. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So her heart is like, fuck no, but I love this man, so I'm going to do it. So I found myself in situations like that as well, you know? But I was so in it. I'm like, whoop, I'm following my rules. Mm -hmm. Everything's cool. I'm good, right? But, and you said, yes, you said it was cool. But in reality, women don't communicate like us. You know what I'm saying? We're straight to the point, facts, yeah. logic, that's it. Theirs is way more com complex. It's like, I'm saying yes, but I'm not saying yes. 
but what do you mean? You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Can't understand that. So we have to, uh, one of the things that I was very intentional about as well after that situation was being able to communicate better and being able to be a better receptor to a woman's communication because it's not this. It's not binary. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? It's abstract. So, you know, I'm trying to understand your heart. Like, what are you really saying? Mm -hmm. So they don't want to disappoint us when they really love us. But we can like still come in and stomp all over their heart and their feelings, you know. And sometimes that that happens. Now, if I was um, in the Middle East, which I've lived before, which I might do again for like a year sometime soon, I would do. I would one hundred percent have a polygynous relationship. You know what I'm saying? Because women there are primed to it. They understand it. Mm -hmm. Here, I don't know if I would do that. Too much pushback here. No. Every woman I deal with, we we talk. They're down, but the concept sounds good and all until you're in it. Yep. You know what I'm saying? Until you see another woman loving your man and vice versa. You know what I'm saying? So it's it's very hard for an American woman to just be 100% okay with it. What are some of those like oh. hangups for an American woman look like? It's 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 jealousy. They they they're jealous. It's never. Now here's the thing. I'm gonna put it like this. The way I present it give me a rational reason why not, why it's a no. And it's usually, I just don't like that. I just don't want my man to share. Mm. I'm like, well, why? There's nothing rational there, but it's just how people are hard. You've never seen it before. You know what I'm saying? And you'll, people will call it cheating. It's like, it's not cheating. Cheating is lying and doing mm -hmm. stuff behind your back, it is going outside of your rules, not honoring your rules. This is open, honest communication. This is love. But it's complex, so people here, women here are just not primed for that. Especially if you care about, now people will just deal with it, you know what I'm saying? But I never want somebody to be in a situation with me and feel stuck, mm. like I gotta do this, or he got the money or whatever, that's not the vibe. I want you to really be here, you know what I'm saying? What's the, the etiquette for a woman to have in that situation when she's in a, this polygamous relationship with a man and one of the other wives is loving on this on the man at this time, mm. and like, what is what is the etiquette for her to do? Does she okay? So this is she sit back and wait it's for her turn? Does she try to join in on the fun? You it's know what I mean? Like, oh, you mean like intimate? Now like, that's that's like, and, gonna and be. And I'm not trying. I'm yeah. not, I don't mean literally sex, but I'm yeah. just saying. Okay. Yeah. yeah intimacy in, is intimacy. Inti intimate moments. Yeah. That that's on an individual basis. What is the rules within your relationship? Some people like. None of that around, you know what I'm saying? Some people are like, let's all have fun together. So it all depends. And once again, with mine, it was never no issues like that, mm -hmm. you know? Um, everybody was loving. Everybody was, it was all good while they had me the way that they wanted me, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? But when I was like stepping back and everything, then everything's a problem, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But that's, even if that was a monogamous relationship, it would be like that, you yeah. know what I mean? So, um, so yeah. But, you know, women are very loving, you know, and in my relationship, I mean, they were just real happy when we was all together. It was a vibe, you know. So in, in polygamy, marriage is the ultimate thing that you want to achieve, me, right? Yeah, okay. Yeah. So let's say you're courting two at the same time, if I'm understanding correctly, you're courting two at the same time, and then out of those two, you choose one. Mm -hmm. Okay, then you choose one, and then... Do you go through the process again to get you another one? Or like, why wouldn't you just marry both of them? You got both of them already. Like, yeah. like how does that look? Yeah, no, I wouldn't do that. Um, I wouldn't do that for one. I don't have the, the mental resources right now to manage two women. My business is going crazy. Like, I got so much going on. I just don't, that's not what I want to do, you know? I want to lock down one and just, fortify the household and then later on maybe we explore that but that's not that's not a um I know a lot of people will probably think like that sounds great that's uh, that's ideal but being in the situation is just is not it's no different than having one you have one you have three you know it's it's going to take a lot of effort a lot of energy you know what I'm saying yeah and I don't want to my life is not predicated on a woman's love it's just not and I hate to sound harsh but I don't get my joy from that. I get my joy from fulfilling my duties and my purpose. So 
my woman is, will be an assistant to me. You know what I'm saying? Somebody I want to take good care of and love and exalt, which I always do with any woman I'm ever with. But that's not like my joy. So you, you can have saying? one woman. Yeah. You for can sure. have one woman, yeah. and, and you could you feel like one woman could fulfill fill up your cup forever? No. Never. But so, but here's the thing: I don't need that. I don't need that. So I'm glad you asked that question. That's not how me personally, and I don't think any man should look for a woman for for joy. Correct. But in that regard, right, whatever yeah. she does, whatever any, whether it's two women, three women, whatever yeah. that those women do for you, you don't think one woman could do that for you? I don't know. You don't know? I, I don't, I just don't need it. Uh, or is it because you have, maybe have, do you feel like that woman is out there, you just haven't ran into her yet? I, I've I've, he, I've he dealt with woman. I've dealt with the dopest women, and mm -hmm. I deal with right now the dopest women. Mm -hmm. But I separate myself from that, so I'm mm -hmm. not dependent on that. Mm -hmm. Because motherfuckers kill themselves and kill right. their women. Prison is full of motherfuckers who put hands on women or killed women because they couldn't have them the way they wanted to when shit didn't work out. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. Yo. Women, we, I'm gonna say this: women are very powerful. For sure. sure. Very powerful. So you got to be careful. So um, I just, you know, I have my rules for myself. Yeah. And just the way that my life is set up, I am very much needed in my, in my world. So I have to be on 100 at mm -hmm. all times. I can't allow myself to be, you know, when somebody tell me like they're going through something with their girl and they, they can't come to work, I'm like, what? Or went through a breakup and now they're just depressed. I'm like get undepressed like what are you talking about you know what i'm saying like all of these things is like a woman will all right if you look in the bible they don't make women look good in the bible you know what i mean a lot of stories is like a man's downfall eve delilah mm. lilith right i don't necessarily see it like that but i do see it as a warning like bro because look what's more enjoyable you're saying like a lot of the niggas downfalls be to, 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 to women, women to like trying to satisfy yeah. women yeah, what's more enjoyable than a woman's love and presence and, and intimacy? To me, nothing. That's the best. So me being a disciplined man, I have to, I have to sacrifice that to an extent. Mm -hmm. Like not, not let myself want to just indulge there. Because I've had periods of my life when I did. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So I'd rather spend my time or put the most of my energy in being industrious Mm -hmm. and fulfilling what I feel like my purpose is, what I've assigned to my life, mm -hmm. um, than my life being predicated on a woman's love. Yeah, I have a, um, I have a question. It, you know, here in Ice and Neat, we believe in being fair. Do yeah. you believe you're a fair, a fair man? 100%. So I want to go back to the, the desire of having one woman ultimately. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But then you said that... If, at some point, may, I may, I'm paraphrasing. Yeah. At some point, it can change, and, right. and you would want to add someone. How do you make that fair to the woman that you decide to say, "Hey, I'm, I'm only going to make uh, one." Yeah. But five years down the road, I say, "Ah, no, I, okay. I need two now." I'm honest, and I having a conversation, you know, today, and I'm like, "Look, I'm not looking for that right now, but we're not taking. I don't want to take that off the table mm. in the future." So I, we talk about it, you know what I'm saying? But I'm not some tyrant. You say, no, I don't care, bring her anyway. I'm not that guy. Yeah. I don't want nothing forceful, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. and, and, and to be honest, it seems like it would be very difficult to convince a woman to be okay with a relationship like that, but it's not. Yeah. It's just not, you know what I'm saying? Especially when you come into the table correct, you know, they respect you because you respect them, you treat them good, you're giving them, you're upgrading their life. They can come to you for wisdom, for guidance, for you, you spoil them with not just attention, love, but things, you know what I'm saying? This is the real world. So people like things, people like feeling protected, feeling safe, moving a certain way, all of that matters, right? So you mean to tell me, young lady, I provide all of these things for you and I can't touch nobody else for the rest of my life but you? It doesn't work like that for me. You know what I'm saying? It's not realistic if I wanted to. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah. I know it sounds kind of harsh, but it's really not. It, it's, what's, harsh, what's harsh is a man being in the top 1% and 
and not like some geek, a man that you want and respect and, and you're attracted to, and he can change your life, upgrade you, upgrade your family, everybody, and you telling him, nope, you st me for the rest of your life. That's kind of that's kind of like not fair. That's not fair. You know what I'm saying? Because a man, here's the thing. A man, we're simple with what we, I think we're simple. You know what I'm saying? Just love me, be sweet, be feminine, um, hold the house down, that's it. I'm gonna go do everything else. You can do whatever you wanna do, but you're not required to. There's no pressure on you, mm -hmm. you know? We have, we have a lot of uh, issues in our country, right? Uh, gender pay equality, sexual harassment, all of these things because women are not properly taken care of. Women have to compete with men in the workspace. That's why they're getting paid less, you know what I'm saying? Women are getting sexually harassed at work. Why are you having men and women in such close proximity and expecting weird shit not to happen? It's gonna happen, you know what I'm saying? That's the nature of people, of men, like, mm. you get horny, you see her, she hot, you see her every day, little laughs, whatever, you start feeling away, especially young men, they can't control themselves, yeah. you know? I'm not saying it's right, but I'm saying women need to be protected, you know? And people admonish like cultures in the East, in Africa, Middle East, some parts of Asia, East Asia, but they don't have the issues that we have, you know what I'm saying? Okay, so earlier you was like, okay, two things. You said that one, your sister is in a, and is in a, she's, she has, she's a one of two wives, Correct. right? And you would allow your daughter, you would be okay if your daughter was one of two wives. Correct. Right? Would you allow both your daughters to, to be wives to the same man? <laughs> nah. Okay, so what are the rules around that, though? Is that just weird? It's weird. It's just weird. Yeah. But there's no logic. It's not likely that my daughters would be in a polygamous relationship, though. It's not likely? Nah. Because they're raised out here? or cause they... Yeah, yeah. It's not likely. Okay. Yeah. It's not likely that I'll find somebody that I respect right. that has his life together that wants that. Mm -hmm. that's that can handle that just culturally it's just different yeah it's different but i'm just saying theoretically yeah on paper i would i would allow that oh uh, yeah i, I want to ask you about the uh, when we were talking about this on our episode it, there was an emotional aspect that i just couldn't really make sense of and i know you said just like handling the two women will be a lot right we all are in committed monogamous relationships mm -hmm. and you know, you've dealt with enough women to know like that emotional drainage throughout the course of a day with just one, that's a lot. Mm -hmm. And we kind of was talking about it in the sense of, we don't know if the emotional aspect is as important in a poly relationship as it is in a monogamous relationship. So I kind of want to understand where it comes down to like, are you filling everybody's cup emotionally as well? Or is that kind of like, yo, our goal is to, while she's pregnant, I need to make her pregnant as well. Or like, what is the goal within that? Is emotions tied into that? Or what, what does that look like? Yeah, I can honestly say that I wasn't filling both women's cup emotionally. Mm. I, was filling it, I was filling one woman's cup emotionally, both women's cup sexually, socially, cute shit like that, you know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? And the reason was we just needed more time, you know, the other one. And um, we just didn't have that kind of time, you know? Now, I will say the first one was kind of blocking that a little bit. She was not playing nice all the time, you know? She was cool with her, but she would like, there was a little couple stretches where she was like- And that's gonna happen, hierarchy. Yeah, yeah 100%. Um, so that, that is a thing and I can take ownership for that poor leadership on my part for not regulating that early and nipping that in the bud, but you know, you're in love, you know what I'm saying? I'm in love. So I'm like, all right, baby, whatever, you know what I'm saying? But that wasn't cool. You know what I mean? Because this one just waiting like a puppy dog, you know what I'm saying? And she's a real, she was a real sweet woman, you know? Yeah. Do you, do you feel like, um, where is, is it's normal in the Middle East? That was, that's yeah. what you said earlier. Yeah. So even the women out there in the Middle East, do you think that they're just suppressing that feeling, or nah. do they really do they really just subscribe to that lifestyle? Bro, 
being with one person every single day is a lot. You know what I'm saying? Right. People need breaks, you know? People need breaks. So the lifestyle is completely different there, right? So when you're out there, you see women shopping with their little assistant behind them, stress-free, nothing. You know what I'm saying? It's way different, though, because women are not working as much as women work here. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? It's way more laid back for women out there. You know, okay, and is that a, is that a better lifestyle for them or not? It's, because, it's subjective. I think ultimately it's better. I think ultimately it's better. But they don't. They don't. Women out there don't make the same money though. They don't. Women here don't make the same money. Well, I mean, women here that, don't make I, the same money well, as men. That's what I'm saying. I'm saying that mm -hmm. women out there though, they don't really have take. They don't really have autonomy over the, their finances like women. They, but here they do. do. So when you get married, your woman is accounted. She that's. Some of that is hers. Half of that is hers. Okay, so then, you know so how does it work if you're marrying three wives, three, all three of them? Get you have to, to be a man of great resources, you know. Because now we got the and out there, this is how it is out there. Like say in the Emirates, you get like the government will give you assistance for every wife that you have. Oh wow! Yeah, they take care of their people out there. Straight up, that's a fact. That's part of the culture. So yeah. I won't ask you. But but but. Men, you know, you're going to take on what you can handle. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Are, there, are there any... What are the legal parameters around polygamy in America? It's not legal in anywhere except for, I believe, Utah to get married uh, to multiple women. But people live... Could, you, so you, could so you there's no such life? thing, basically, out here. Huh? There's no such thing as a legal polygamy. polygamy yeah, there. in Utah. Could you, yeah. could you get married there and then move back to California? or is it? Like I suppose so. I don't see why. Can't nobody tell you you got to stay there. You know right. what I mean? Yeah. But Utah is kind of dope. I've been there. Like, my first time going, I didn't think I would like it. You know? I'm like, I'm thinking Mormons and yep. no black people. And it was Mormons and no black people, but it was kind of fire. <laughs> it was kind of fire. So they they super nice. They yeah, super they nice. They're, they they're nice people. I know that history is weird, but who cares? Like every religion is weird you know, <laughs> in the books. Yep. Uh, the people were super, super nice. And out there, they felt, it seemed real free. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. It's not a big, it's not a densely populated place. So you kind of could do whatever you want to do. Like I got a homie out there, he bought a few hundred acres and he's building uh his little compound completely off the grid you know what i'm saying and i'm like i fucks with that you know what i mean uh -huh. yeah because this year i was planning on looking in a few places to be off the grid just for my family estate but they're not really off the grid but that's off the grid you know what i'm saying when you have your own electricity your own water setup mm. your own internet starlink you know what i'm saying wow you could be completely off the grid no permits in certain places in Utah, and I like that. Yeah, you know what I mean? do you feel about what do you feel about the current like state of relationships, just in general? I feel men bad. versus women. It sucks. Like, how, how's that? I feel bad for people. <laughs> yeah, you know, I feel bad for people. Um, it's a it's a power struggle. I th I don't think I know that American women have been lied to and manipulated. Right? There was a time when women, when this was a very traditional place, right? When this is gonna trigger people, but this is just facts. Men worked, women took care of the house, right? It shouldn't even be triggering. That should be the vibe. You know what I'm saying? Um, <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> it shouldn't be triggering to say, "Oh, women not in the military." That's a vibe because I don't want my woman fighting. But think you know about it saying? though, like taking care of the house though. Um, it's, it, it sounds great. Men work, women take care of the house until. That woman is put out, all right, or that woman can't go where she I wants to go. I got a solution for that, right? Or that can't. I have a solution for that. What is the solution? Courtship, marriage, married, right? You're not gonna be so quick to kick somebody out because she's gonna take half with her. Yep. You feel me? Yep. So she has some security. Okay, so you women think need that's this. A great, that's a great construct. Yeah, for like, I'm good with that. You good with that? Because people shouldn't be out here just fucking just to be fucking anyway. Okay. I don't agree with that. I think it's bad for society. For one, women are so beautiful, so dope. Women are, y'all are the vessels to life, mm. right? Why are you having sex with everybody? With whoever's nice to you, you know what I'm saying? Take you on a date, like nah. Women need to stop allowing 
act, giving access to themselves to the most intimate part of themselves with somebody that they're not committed with. Mm. Somebody that's not down to give that ultimate commitment. You know what I'm saying? Men should not be running up in women, lying to them or not taking them serious, knowing that they can get them pregnant. Most, when women get knocked up, the dudes leave most of the time. It's not right, but that's how it is. So the, the stakes is high for a woman. So she should be have, she should be protected. Her father should be there, her big brother, somebody. Her grandma should be like, girl, what the fuck are you doing? You know what I'm saying? Mm. We don't have any of these, we have all of this city girl shit and this, you know, there was a, is a, y'all can look this up. There's a lady that used to work for Cosmopolitan Magazine. She was like the editor in chief or something. They were spinning these like love stories, right? And people took it literal. It was like this cosmopolitan woman smoking cigarettes, wearing short skirts, having sex when she wanted to. I think I read about it. They was pushing this. that. Yeah. It was fiction, but people start like mm -hmm. it was yeah. selling magazines. So Did you hear about that, Jamal? So I it started being that. real and women started living like that. You know what I'm saying? And then there was a big push for women in the workplace, not for equality. It was for more people to tax. And it was for factory workers to have people that they can pay less than men. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. It was never about equality, you know what I'm saying? There's no equality between men and women. We're completely different, completely. My, my beautiful daughter, that's my heart, she's seven years old. She is not, at least now, gonna love me like she loved her mother. It's not equal. I don't have nurturing energy. I don't know how to do that, you know what I'm saying? When, when she's older, it's gonna be different, right? But men, are, men and women are not the same, but we have to act like we all are now. I mean, it's so weird here that men can be women and women can be men now. This is a real fucked up society. You know what I'm saying? And it starts with taking women out the house, go and compete with the men, go to war, get the gun, be a cop. Mm. What? I seen a video the other day, uh, a, a female cop and a male cop was apprehending this guy, he had a gun. The woman freaked the fuck out, hyperventilating. She couldn't put the handcuffs on her. Even after they had him subdued, she's like freaking out. I felt bad for her, you know what I'm saying? Uh -huh. No, we protect women, you feel me? We protect women, we don't put women in the line of, line of fire like that. That's, that is fucking ridiculous, you feel me? So we live in such a backward society to where you, you're a bad person if you don't call a person that looks like a man a woman if he wants to be called a woman. You're a bad person. That's how backward the society is. So you let them take an inch, that shit goes miles. And that inch was pushing women out into the workforce, competing with men. It's not fair. That's why, they, that's why there's gender equal, inequality in pay. Like, no shit. Let's say me and this woman is both equally yoked um, in qualifications and set job. Okay, let's say we get paid the same. Let's say she starts a family, she gets pregnant. She can't keep working while she's pregnant or right after she has the baby. So why, if I'm continuing to advance in my career, why does she get paid the same? There's so many different variables that people don't even talk about, you know what I'm saying? And they've done such a number on people, you get in trouble for saying these things. You're a woman, women that get mad. You know how many women say things to me like, I don't like that post you did. I agree with it. I just don't like it. <laughs> it's like, that's, that's cool. <laughs> like, you agree with it because it's facts, because it's right. You know what I'm saying? I don't have a perspective of like, women shut the fuck up. Da, da, da. That's not me. Yeah. I have the utmost respect yeah, for women. Yeah, I, I was going to say, like, you almost kind of confuse people. I, I respect <laughs> yeah. you always, almost I respect a woman enough to not have her out here busting her ass yeah, all the time. To me, it sounds like, yo, like, when you listen to you, like, I was gonna ask you. It sounds like you just you come from a place of love. Like you're talking about, hey, women should be protected. Love and protection. Be, you know yeah. what I mean? All these things. So, what is the pushback usually? Like, how do you explain that to people when when you? If we have a a nuanced dialogue, they understand, uh -huh. right? But if they just get a clip or something from a podcast, mm -hmm. they. Mm -hmm. What do you mean we shouldn't work? Okay. What do you mean we shouldn't be in the army? You really want to go into combat? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. You really want to go into collective? combat? No thanks. I wouldn't choose you to fight with me, to be on my team. Mm. I wouldn't choose a woman to go into battle with me. I wouldn't. I'm sorry. I, I just wouldn't. Mm. Would y'all? 
No, not, I, not, not, not in that particular category. No. <laughs> yeah, no, I'll be nah, choosing nah, a woman. You feel me? I mean, like, and I'm pretty sure there's, there's great female fighters. I'm, excellent. Like, I'm pretty sure Ronda Rousey can beat a lot of niggas' asses. I'm sure she can't. I'm sure she can't. Because guys, the testosterone levels is so much higher than a woman's. Hmm. A strong woman has like a 200 test. That's like crazy. Hmm. But that's like, but you don't think, that's you don't like, think that's like the, the weak, bottom for a, a weak man. man is uh, three, you don't 400. Think, yeah. You don't think Ronda Rousey could beat like a regular average guy? I don't think so. I don't think so either. Bro. He'd be too strong. He's a man. She could catch him. She, she, she could catch, catch him. Yeah, yeah, for she sure. She could get with him. She could get with him. She could get with him. Yeah. She's going to probably lose most of them. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, she could catch him, but I don't think if you 10, how many she, out okay. of 10 she go through, maybe two. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Okay, okay. And she's the exception. And she's the exception. Yeah. Okay. Do most people know that? When obviously, like you said, once you have conversations, but like people that meet you and people that talk to you or people see you with your women out, do they know that you're coming from a place of love? And also, I do want to kind of know where that you're in America. Mm -hmm. So you're in this Eurocentric society. What made you hold on to like, nah, I'm not going to conform to that. Like, I still feel like catering to to multiple women is what's better for my life it's gonna suit my life and like i don't believe that these women should even be working or lifting a finger yeah do do you feel like people would know that about you all right people that know me yeah because here's the thing i've divorced myself a long time ago from the culture in america mm -hmm. and my stance has nothing to do with polygamy is way more other things you know so um you know I, I have knowledge of self, I have for a long time, and I know this is not our ways, this is not anybody's ways, to, you know, and I know that people have been indoctrinated in this country to be weak, to be docile, to be humble, to be uh, obedient, you know, and, and subservient, and to not question authority, to just accept the status quo, and I don't, I've that's never gelled with me ever in my life. You know what I'm saying? So my DNA is so strong. Like my ancestors are so heavy in me. Even before I like reading and understanding the knowledge, none of this felt right. I always felt like I didn't belong. You know what I'm saying? Now, this is my country. This is our country. Like this is our shit. Our people fought and died in every war, every major war here since before this was America, right? And many of us was here before the Europeans were here, but this culture has never been mine, ever. It's not, I don't vibe with it at all. Mm. So yeah, so everything, once you understand that you start questioning everything, and I question everything, you know what I'm saying? You start questioning, uh, uh, you know, this new modern woman push, you question, Matter of fact, you question everything that's a common narrative because I have and they're all fucked. They're all wrong. They're, even shit like Donald Trump. I was with everybody. I was like, fuck Trump. Until I said, well, why am I saying that? Mm. And then I said, oh, uh, what was it? Charlottesville. He said, oh, racist people, good people. Let me go and do my own research. So I found the video, the long video of that, that event. Lo and behold, that video only had like 20,000 views, right? That's interesting. The clips had a lot of views, right? I watch it, it's boring. Ah, here's the part, here's the part. I'm paraphrasing, but he said this. They asked him a question, he said, look, there's good people, good law-abiding people that wanna uphold their heritage and keep the statue up, statues of a guy that owned slaves. There's good law-abiding people that wanna tear it down. They all have the right to be here and da, 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 da. good people on both sides. And they, they took that because in my head, he was like good people, like the racist people, good people, like everybody's good, whatever. But it was not the way they cut and carved it and fed it to us was not reality. It's not mm -hmm. what he said. So then I started going deeper on, the rabbit, deeper on a rabbit hole on him. I'm like, this guy, ain't, he's a terrible racist if he's a racist. You know what I'm saying? For real. There was a, so I'm going to ask y'all, who... What American organization should be, or would you consider a terrorist organization, a terrorist group? What American organization should yeah. be considered a KKK. terrorist group? Boom, right? 
Nobody has ever classified them as a terror organization, but Trump did. On the low, it wasn't even, he didn't talk. I never heard him mention it, but he did. You know what I'm saying? And I'm not here to defend him, but I'm just saying, this is an example of saying fuck the status quo and every, everything they put out there because it's all bullshit. Just like that, mm -hmm. that was bullshit. You know what I'm saying? For black people to hate him was bullshit. Yep. George Floyd, Ahmaud Arbery, I'm like, why is they doing this now? Because these events didn't just happen these were months ago. You know what I'm saying? Why y'all sit on them cars and start doing it now? Putting it in people's face, making people pissed. Because, oh. well, well, well yeah. because I think that if you feel, if you feel disrespected, if you, if you feel like something's been going on for so long mm -hmm. and, you know, you're fed up with it and they keep doing it, that's when you get the rioting. And is it the best way? Probably not. But it's an it's action, it's an attempt because, because what happens is maybe, maybe the next step is us figuring out what's the best What's the best course of action? Maybe this step is though just taking action. But what did we you gain I mean? from that? What I'm saying is we don't know. I don't know. This you this is this, this is what I'm saying. I feel you. I hear you. But this is what I'm saying. Black people, I love my people, right? We we are that 144,000 uh figuratively and literally in the book God's chosen, you know. We fulfill the prophecy, right? I love my people, but I love my people enough to be honest with my people. And my people need to have some emotional resilience and stop being so reactive, right? And sit back and think and observe and one, have some accountability for our actions. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Look, I was told, look, I used to be in the streets hustling, doing a lot of dumb shit. And my, my big homie, my OG, he told me, he said, look, just remember cuz you play in dirt you get dirty at some point so don't go cry you get arrested like you ride that shit right. out whatever you know what I'm saying we don't do that mm -hmm. we play in dirt and get dirty and get filthy and cry foul when look police they deal with the worst people on the planet every day they deal with people lying to them drug addicts rapists killers every day these are not nice guys as they shouldn't be. They're dealing with criminals, right? So when you encounter a cop and you're you're acting a certain way, you dealing with all of the shit that he been dealing with all day. You know what I'm saying? Mm. So my thing is like, yo, get, stop putting yourself in positions to be profiled or to be arrested or whatever the fuck. Mm. You know? And with with Floyd, I mean he was he was doing some dumb shit. He was buying dope. His drug dealer was in the car with him. He didn't get arrested because he was complying, trying to use counterfeit money. It was a lot of bad shit that was going on, people not realizing, you know what I'm saying? And he was high out of his mind, right? On the same shit that's killing people, you know what I'm saying? So what do you say to people that, what do you say that to, well, that type of shit happened to white people too, but they don't end up dead? They do end up dead. That's what you said, <laughs> okay. More of them get killed than us, but we don't, we don't talk about that. Look, white people get killed by cops more than black people, but white people, other white people don't put that in people's faces for a reason. They want to keep us. This is trauma that they're marketing to us. Show some white boys getting killed. Show that over and over because it happens too, right? But no, they show us that for a reason to keep us in that state of fear, confusion. You know what I'm saying? We're afraid of them. Like, nah. You know what I'm saying? Um, it's not... It's, People got to understand that you're being marketed this shit for a reason mm -hmm. to keep you in certain uh, volatile emotional states. Now, we should have been very like, uh, look, people remember Ice Cube was going sitting down with the Republican Party. People got mad at him. He like, bro, I'm trying to get solutions. Mm -hmm. Black people need to come together. We need to be more pragmatic about things, not emotional about things. And as a collective, say, look, we're not voting at all. We're not voting. We make up 14% of the population in the country, right? Each election cycle, whoever wins is by a razor thin margin. So it's safe to say that whoever we vote for is gonna win. You know what I'm saying? Yep. So don't vote, let them fill that void. In the next cycle, come to the table and do some real negotiations with us. 
It's just you like, feel me? That's four years of waiting, though. But what do we? I mean, but look, we, but we what's happening? Wait for hundreds. But what's happening? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nothing. Yeah, yeah. Well, years yeah, go yeah. by fast, though. Look, look, yeah, yeah, yeah. look, look. But here's the thing. Whether it's Biden, Bush, whoever in office, it doesn't really change most of our lives at all. Because this is another most thing of that. Our lives. Yeah, most of our lives. This is what people gotta understand. The federal government has very little authority over people's lives. We have state, local, county, city governments that has more effect on us. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. The Fed is like, is almost pageantry. You know what I'm saying? It's not that important. I mean, the fact that marijuana is legal here, illegal the next state, legal that, it's, it's just goofy. Mm -hmm. Legal, legal statewide, illegal federally. What does that even mean? You feel me? So people gotta understand what's most important politically is right in your state, in your city, your school board where your kids go to school, your city council where you live at, shit yeah. like that. We have, we got have direct influence over that easy without money. You feel me? Mm -hmm. So the federal government, who gives a fuck? Like this not Biden is shit, but nobody lost their jobs. Like everybody's fine. Everybody was fine with Trump. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. One of my homies was like, uh, you know. When Trump was in, he's like, you know, he, he create more jobs. I'm like, how do you know? You don't know. Mm -hmm. People is less homeless. Like, do you see homeless people spilling into your yard, like coming to you? Like, nah, nobody knows. You just know what they put on TV. And none of that shit is, is honest and accurate. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Hey, so let me, before we wrap up, I want to get back to uh, just, you know, get back to the, to the poly subject matter. All right. I've seen a lot of people. This the conversation is just more prevalent now, yeah. right? And I think people, a lot of guys, like the idea of like, yo, like, it's cool, you know. I want, I want to play, I want to play, I want to subscribe to that. Do you think men are really interested in subscribing to the poly lifestyle wholeheartedly, or do you think they just like the idea of having sex with multiple women? I think it's the idea of having sex with multiple women. Um, like Omar said earlier, I don't think a lot of guys are thinking it through. Mm. I don't think guys are thinking about the emotional maintenance that they will have to employ for each woman. Um, they're not taking that into consideration. It's not part of the American culture. American culture is cheating. It's a cheating culture. It's a lying culture. It's a dishonest culture. And I think most guys are used to that. Mm. And. I talk to guys all the time and I'm like, yo, when they're cheating, I'm like, bro, why would you do that? Don't you love her? You don't love her? Then why would you lie to her? You know what I'm saying? And anybody in my circle, we all make money together. So I'm like, if anybody in my circle we'll do that is today. lying we'll or cheating to their woman, the closest person to them, I don't trust them. Oof. You ain't gonna give a shit about me. You gonna lie to me, still for me probably. So. I try to keep everybody, but my circle, everybody's solid. Nobody lies to their women. Everybody's solid, right? Um, and everybody has, you know, good situations. But um, for most, for the most part, I don't think it's, I don't think it's conducive to most people here. Mm -hmm. I don't think people understand what goes into it. Um, it can be a very beautiful setup, you know, like a sense of community. You know what I'm saying? Family. It's a vibe. It's a vibe chilling with both of your women. I got a question for you. I think you came to our house one time mm -hmm. and I'm there with both of my ladies. You and your wife came. How did y'all, what did it look like to y'all? I know y'all had a conversation probably when y'all left. Like, yeah. what the fuck? In the car. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, I think, I think we've always been the type of people that kind of, you know, we understand that everyone has different backgrounds mm -hmm. and different experiences. Right. You know what I mean? Um, it's no different than someone saying, yo, I'm gay. Mm -hmm. Right? It's, it's common. It's, even though we don't subscribe to it, it's common. Mm -hmm. So, um, although it's a, uh, you know, obviously it's like, oh, like, I wonder how they feel. Mm -hmm. Right? I wonder how, like, truly how they feel. Yeah. Those are the questions we ask. But mm -hmm. is it weird? No. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But, it's always interesting to talk talk about it, right? And talk to you about it. Like, right. hey, like, what's your what's your mindset about that? And you mm -hmm. asked me that night, he's like, yo, what you think? Or like, you know, is that something you could ever do? Right. right? I was like, nah, I can't do that. But I can't say that. And we said we talked about this last episode, right? 
I'm not going to ever be one to tell someone that they can't subscribe to that because we all come from different cultures and different experiences. Right. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah. It's no different than religion. You get what I'm saying? Like, I can still uh, accept the fact that, you know, you can take part in uh, Ramadan. I don't know if right. that's a religion thing. Right? Is, that, is Ramadan a religion thing? I don't know. Somewhat, yeah. Okay. But I, it's for well, everybody. Well, but, yeah, yeah. So, and, and I don't. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And I'd be completely fine. So, I think... Let me let me let me run it like this. So just like straight facts, right? So when I first got with my girl, I told her this is my 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 traditional setup. She said, "Cool." She said, "How do you want to do it? Do you want to do it like this, like that?" I said, "I want to bring someone else in in a meaningful relationship." She was like, mm, "How about you just have we just have fun?" I said, "I don't want to do that because I don't want to wear condoms." Just to be honest, right? And I don't want to have to get everybody tested, all of that stuff. I don't want to, not just that, I don't want to waste my time with somebody I'm not going to put in my family. So she said, cool. So we found the other girl. So when we brought Shorty into this situation, I told her she was excited. She was ecstatic about it. I said, but look, before we're intimate, I need to see some, see some test results. You know what I'm saying? We can pr provide the same. She said, cool. So before that happened, we went, we all went out on a date, right? Delilah, we had a ball, we had fun. And she's asking her, you think he'll let me come home with y'all? Mm -hmm. She's asking me, I said, no. <laughs> I said, my a rule's a rule. She's asking in, I said, no. I'm not gonna go back on my, my rules, my word, because now you're not gonna respect me. Mm -hmm. You're gonna see that I'm weak. You know what I'm saying? And I'm not. Oh. So I said, nah. And she, like the next day we dropped her off, the next day she texted me, she said, I love spending time with y'all. You know, I felt so safe, like all of that stuff, you know what I'm saying? So it's not a situation, I'm not steamrolling nobody. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Um, but that, when it that's wasn't- what it, That's what it could look like, or, or from the outside looking mm -hmm. in. You know, you know, no, Did it look like that to y'all? No, not to me. Yeah. But yeah, that's pro it's, we we close proximity though. Right, right. right. There's a lot of people. When that you have, see right uh, in intimate setting, you see it's yeah, chill. Yeah, you know what I mean. So, um, but yeah, so that's not it's it's a man cannot have that situation without being a man that's full of love and providing that kind of love and that kind of support and that mm -hmm. kind of security. Mm -hmm. No woman is gonna just fall for that. Like, mm -hmm. and the other one woman have money. It's not like she's poor. You know what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. They both have careers, you know what I'm saying? They were like smart, intelligent women who had their lives together. So it's not like I went and found some broke chicks from the hood that don't yeah. know any better. Yeah. These are smart, well, both educated girls from good families. So it's it's just, it's the most masculine position a man can be in mm -hmm. and the most feminine position a woman can be in, right? But the foundation that made it work for the time that it did was like love and honesty. Okay. And that's that's what people got to embody. Like people, when I hear it thrown out there, I could see the little, the devils in their eyes, yeah. like the sexual shit. And it's that's the least of it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? That's not that's not it, you know? Yeah. So, yeah, it's got to be a, I, I don't believe in wasting a woman's time. Leave that girl alone. Do you think you can really take care of her, honor her, protect her, all of these things? If not, don't bother that woman. You know what I'm saying? I won't bother, me personally, not bother nobody. I don't think I can really provide for, yeah. keep my planets in orbit properly. So, you know, that's my position on it. So that's why it works for me. That's why when I present it to someone that I'm seeing, they have no problem with it because they know, they see the sincerity in my mm -hmm. heart yeah. and they're, they're good with that. And I never, I've never had nobody in an uncomfortable, odd situation. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And I take care of everybody around me, so. That's dope. Hey, yeah. um, y'all got something? Y'all hey, good? I'm good. Mike, man, I appreciate you, bro. Um, I didn't know we was going to get this much out of you. Nah, me <laughs> neither. Me neither. Hey, I bro, ain't hold hey, you. you gave us an hour straight, so we got a lot of clips to, to clip. <laughs> you know nah. what I mean? But, but nah, thank <laughs> you, bro. Thank you for real. Um, I met Mike last year or two years ago. A couple years ago now. Maybe yeah. two years ago. And um, we've just been solid ever since, man. And so we just kept in touch and being able to just build a solid relationship, man. So. You know what? Let me just speaking on yeah, that. Yeah. Let me give you your flowers, bro. Um, because it's not too. I, I, I'm very adamant of like in search of like finding men um, 
that could be like a mentor toward me or just offer game and advice. You know what I mean? Someone that I would admire that has had success in multiple fields, something that I have the desire to do. And Mike has done nothing but pour into me, Appreciate bro. Appreciate that. Yes, and, and then fill, fill me up with information yeah. and, and reach out to me and check, check in on me, man. So I appreciate you, bro, because there's not too many um, guys that I look up and admire that are doing that. You that's know what dope. I mean? That's, that's something that I'm, I'm, I'm yearning yes, for, sir. bro. Yes, so sir. I really appreciate you. I want to give you your flowers. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I, want to, I want to give y'all y'all flowers, too, because y'all some sharp, fly young brothers. You know what I'm saying? And I watch. And I'm like, yo, they, I like these guys. Like, appreciate you know what I'm saying? You. Like, yeah. I don't like a lot of people. Yeah, appreciate I just that. weird, bro. I'm just such a loner. But I really, <laughs> I really vibe with y'all, man. Y'all, and I love y'all friendship, that Thank brotherhood. You. That's so important. That's so important, man. People, it's so many like weird uh, personality deficiencies that people have because they have no sense of community, mm -hmm. no sense of brotherhood. And I think what y'all are doing is dope, is awesome. Y'all podcast is dope. Like y'all putting a real good look on young black brothers. Thank and you, I bro. appreciate that. Thank you, you know man. bro. And Thank the world you, need to see this. Man, love. You know um, so, Family, listen, if you're watching and listening, you know the deal. Screenshot, post your story, tag us, do what it do. Um, follow myself on Instagram at Duke, Jalan at just.jalan, Omar at omar.bowden, and Mike at Mike Rashid, or that's yep, what it is, Mike at Rashid. Mike Rashid. Um, let us know what you thought about the episode. Make sure you subscribe to us on all so, uh, streaming platforms. Follow us on all social platforms. And that's it, man. Much love, much gratitude. I'm Duke. I'm Omar. I'm Jalan. I'm Mike. And this is another episode of Nice and Neat. And that's that on that. Yes, sir. I'll be the one to take the risk to go and get them bands. I'll be the one to never sit and go and make a plan. Knowing my mother getting old and I don't got no time. Gotta keep a couple for the road or else get left behind. Yeah. To the hundreds, pledge allegiance, I stand.